<laughs> Top flight. You, you are beautiful people. We're intelligent people, aren't we, here tonight? Brainy people. Yeah. Ross with the glasses, read a few books. <laughs> you got a degree, have you? Yeah. Oi! Multimedia technology. Multimedia <laughs> technology. How to work the remote, essentially. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now it gives me great pleasure to welcome onto the stage, show your appreciation and applause. I'm delighted to introduce to you now, Mr. Will Hodgson. Very sweetheart, how you're doing? <laughs> right, absolutely super. I think the fairest thing to do at the start is probably introduce myself, because I'm fully aware if you don't know me, I can occasionally come across quite the peculiarity, so we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> like I said, my name is Hodgson, Wilberforce P. Hodgson, if you want to get technical about it, and I come from the People's Republic of Chippenham. <laughs> uh, I have many occupations. Before I started doing this, I was a college lecturer for 12 months. I was also a professional wrestler for nine brief but colourful months in the Trowbridge area. <laughs> when I was 17, I was a skinhead. When I was 19, I was a card-carrying communist. And I've been collecting Care Bears, My Little Ponies and Rainbow Bright Dolls pretty much all my natural life. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with that, except it made me probably the worst skinhead in Chippenham's entire living fucking history. <laughs> I don't know what you do or don't know about skinheads, but it's a really maligned youth culture. Skinhead is apolitical, it's just an offshoot with the mods, it's about music, it's about good clothes, nothing to do with the BMP or anything that, that whatsoever. There is a goal for difference between being a skinhead and being a dick splash of alopecia. <laughs> But we're very good at it. I mean, everyone else was out doing sort of approved Chippenham skinhead pastimes, like kicking in phone boxes and tattooing their own hands and setting fire to hippies and chucking them at the old bill. I was quite content to stay home Saturday nights combing out my pony collection and listening to the Grease 2 soundtrack. <laughs> Funny thing was, it made me quite a good wrestler. <laughs> Not brilliant. Not no Kendo Nagasaki or Cat Weasel or Les Kellett or none of the great legends, but... I was pretty good for nine months in the game. I think what done it was... Well, basically, I don't know what schools you went to with that, but if you were a boy and you went to my primary school, age five, and you come in with glowworms, glow friends, wuzzles, popples, wild snuggle bums, and puffle lumps, she ra cat -er, and a bluebird a la carte kitchen, <laughs> then you would have to learn to fight pretty dang sharpish. <laughs> if only to keep your collection in mint condition. <laughs> All my stuff's in what we call a C9, C10 state in pony collecting terminology, and believe me, I had to occasionally break them off some to keep it that way, and that's what enabled me to wrestle for nine months as Mad Dog Madison, Wiltshire Wolfman. <laughs> and I live, of course, in the manly town of Chippenham. Chippenham's a man's town, so I'm reliably and aggressively informed on a repeated basis, and if that's true, I ain't got much stock in it, to be honest. I ain't no great shakes as a man. Wear a bit of war paint, as you can see, drink baby sham if they got it, smoke menthol, Wear underwear, I get free off the cover of Sugar magazine, and I ain't ashamed of that. <laughs> Don't hold nothing in, but puts me in a good frame of mind for patrolling my neighbourhood, football, driving, DIY. These things just baffle and bewilder me. They really do. But most, I mean, what's to be a man in Chippenham, though, anyway? To be a man in Chippenham, essentially buy yourself a Range Rover and festoon yourself with loads of for cuck clothing and stuff like that. That's like <laughs> an horrible t-shirts, townies where you get from like the shops of like sort of nice beaver 69, big cock down here, I'm essentially a fucking date rapist, big arrow pointing downwards. <laughs> Driving around loving your England and reading the lads magazines. Win a free boob job for your girlfriend, whether she fucking likes it or not hit her. If she won't go under the knife, go and fucking kick her in, mate. What watch to wear for killing a Turkish football supporter? You want to do it with style? No, surrender. No. No surrender. I don't dig these magazines at all. The main thing I differ with them on <laughs> is essentially, you might think that's a bit of a feminist rant. It's not really. It's more a case of kind of taste. My mates are all in things like sort of high street unnies, all that sort of caper where you got the, the pristineness. Do you know what I mean? The sort of. I mean, if I want a pristine skin and a flat stomach, I've got Barbie dolls at home, I'll undress them if I see fit, and the <laughs> horrible big round hard silicone tits, the horrible chemical compound in them, and burn your face off your bit, the nipple too hard, they go over that sort of <laughs> caper. But I'm a fan of the bigger woman, because they've got a tattoo right about there, it's got a fag burn on it, which I reckon was a conspiracy. That's a size 1820 woman, and that's pretty much what I'm into. Very much the sort of man who climb over Kylie Minogue to get to firm Britain, and I ain't ashamed of that, and don't. <laughs> I'm the only 
person in this room either. Basically, if a woman takes her jeans off in front of me and there's no indentation in her skin, I ain't arrived in the slightest. <laughs> People say to me how big do you like them? Essentially, if I can breathe too easily, I feel like a gigantic failure. I'm the, <laughs> the only man I know fancies Monica in Friends only in the flashbacks. And <laughs> I wonder what the word was for someone like me. And then there was this documentary on ITV1 called Chubby Chasers. And that's just ridiculous. By the very nature of the game, I ain't got to chase them that far before they start running out of breath and stuff. So. <laughs> I always get me bounty. And then people say, how'd you get like that? Like it's some kind of dreadful affliction. Cos we ain't a free country, we only be a free country when I can admit I want to shag Sonia out of EastEnders and not have scorn heaped upon me by idiots, but... <laughs> I think what done it was having a crush on Miss Piggy when I was about seven or eight year old. <laughs> Again, don't you tell me I was the only one. She'd been the ideal girlfriend for me. She's curvaceous, voluptuous. She was a diva. No, she really was. Some people say Jennifer Lopez is a diva. Never trust anyone who ain't seen the great Muppet caper. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking word they say, and she was talented as well. Women were talented or sexy. She could sing, dance, act, and do karate, quadruple threat, but there was a stumbling block, and that's the fact she was a pig. <laughs> Not like some people say that. You get some idiot at work, like, did you pull the other night? Yeah, right, fucking pig. She was fucking bag over her head, bag over my case, or his fell off, keep St. George in my heart. Not like actual pig. Porcus Maximus, <laughs> rolling round in the swill and suckling and all that, and that's best grown out of. So if you get caught in Jim Henson's creature workshop with your pants down, you're essentially in the shit. <laughs> so years went by, I sort of psychoanalyzed myself, lackey bands round the wrist and that, and after many years I was finally cured. Didn't fancy Miss Piggy no more. Then they brought Sharon back in East Enders with hair extension, <laughs> and the fucking square one goes on. The life will deal with you like that, he'll deal them on a frequent basis. See, that surprises people, that old thing. Not so much the fact I'm talking about, like, pigs, puppet or otherwise, more the fact I was talking about women to begin with, cos you get this, this will surprise you. I get mistaken for being gay a certain proportion of the time walking around the pubs and clubs of Chippenham. That really amazing, all gives about. <laughs> Take a little pride in your appearance, what happens, but... You don't bother me. I used to bother me when I was about seven, but I grew to learn that gay people provide one of the most valuable services in society. They just piss off complete dickheads for a living, and that we've got to salute them. <laughs> really, you show me a man who's got a genuine problem with gay people, I'll show you a dipshit who doesn't deserve to breathe fucking oxygen. Good on them. When they do things like sort of get married and adopt kids and that, I can't contain my joy. If there's asylum seekers involved, all the fucking better, I say. <laughs> Be beautiful, but I get it a lot, and started wondering why. Started thinking all kinds of things, thought maybe it's... Got to be something, maybe too many trips to Claire's accessories. Started thinking maybe it's because I'm sensitive. My feminine side's like in touch and it's permeating out and their jealousy, you will, their jealousy. And I was just missing the point. See, you're all sophisticated people, ain't you? You're in a theatre where I come from that makes you sophisticates. Because <laughs> you probably think someone's gay if they have sex with someone of their own gender. <laughs> Off of chipping them, you're gay if you can fucking read. <laughs> If that book's got no pictures in it, you are a nonce. <laughs> That's the way it is. Last time I got mistaken properly, I'm a member of three working men's clubs. The third one is the most unaptly named place in the world. It's called the Chippenham Liberal Club. <laughs> not really, not really. I was in there like about six months ago, something like that, and I run into this big old Grebo called Haxall Drinks in there. You know what a Grebo is? Sort of like biker heavy metal type of guy, Marillion t shirt, big meatloaf patch on his back, horrible sort of black teeth, makes Shane McGowan look like Donny Osmond, drinks the dregs, eats the toast, he's that kind of guy. And he doesn't like me for some reason. He grabs me when I'm going for a whack and he goes, I'm fucking sick of you walking around here like a fat gay pride fag. I'm going to take you out the back, stuff you out, faggot. And I really hate that word, faggot. I really do. That makes my blood boil like no other insult. Not just because it's homophobic, more because it's such a fucking Americanism, do you not think? <laughs> because if you're going to be a homophobic dickhead, be a dickhead, you know what I mean? Let the world pass by you, be like Alf Garnet or whatever, but for Christ's sake, use a British phrase while you're doing it. <laughs> so, oh, for sure, after Jesse, have a bit of national pride in your prejudice, that's what I'd say. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> fucking faggot, I started snuffing, I got saved by a slightly less greasy greeble. It looked a bit like Mickey Pierce out of Fools and Horses, but a lot less ill. He comes up and he rescues me, and he goes, Axel, 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 leave him, leave him, leave him, leave him. He's not gay. No, he's not. He used to be a wrestler. And that's weird. That's the goddamnedest thing. Because one minute Haxel thinks I'm gay, 
for reasons best known to himself, probably forgot to bring the air rifle with me to the club. But <laughs> when he finds out, I used to get down in my pants, oil myself up and get in the ring with a load of big fuckers and grab them from behind and sit on their faces and put their heads between my legs. <laughs> Suddenly, I become the straightest man in Christendom. <laughs> That, my friends, is the Chippenham Judicial System. I think I've done me time. A Fongul. I'm Will Hodgson. Cheers, bye. Yeah.